Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. For better or worse, or perhaps just for our own sanity, it does look like we'll soon know if Anthony Joshua will indeed face Deontay Wilder in a showdown for all the heavyweight belts, with Eddie Hearn confirming if Wilder doesn't take their current offer, that offer being in the UK, they are moving on to fight Alexander Povetkin. So the respective camps, they've been negotiating for two months now. Yes, it really is that long. Two months. And in that time, we really have seen it all. So Joshua originally offering $12.5 million flat to Wilder. Then we saw a counter offer of $50 million for Joshua's purse. Subsequent debates about the veracity of that offer. Shelley Finkel then leaking everything and sundry to the media. Eddie Hearn moving the goalposts over time on what he was saying and it now being all about the fans, not about money. And Joshua, he is willing to take less money to stay in the UK. But if he is fighting, it's only in the UK or not at all. And then you toss in the respective fan bases. Really been going at it, especially on social media, YouTube, no different. A lot of fans not short on an opinion, that's for sure. I'll get to the quotes and then some thoughts, because we do seriously have to consider that they're going to have to stick a pin in this. They're going to have to come back to negotiations, come back to the fight at a later date. And essentially both fighters will have to move on to their other opponents. So Anthony Joshua's promoter, Eddie Hearn, he's told Sky Sports that if both sides can reach an agreement for the event's location, arrangements could be finalised in a few days. And the story notes that Hearn's father, Barry Hearn, who's the chairman of Matchroom Sport, he's actually negotiating currently with Wilder's co-manager Shelley Finkel in New York. And the location is a central theme of discussions. So Eddie Hearn, he says, we want to do the fight in the UK. I don't think they're too keen to do the fight in the UK. But I think they are slowly realising that without Anthony Joshua, the future is not too bright and rosy for Deontay Wilder. Wilder wants the fight. We want the fight. Time is running out because we need to let the WBA know and Alexander Povetkin know if we're fighting them in September. At the moment, it looks like we are. I think this fight with Wilder could get agreed in the next couple of weeks. I think it will get agreed in the next couple of weeks and probably signed. It's just a case of whether that fight happens in October, November, September or we do it in February or March next year. Either way, I do think it will get agreed. It's just a timescale thing now. So those were Eddie Hearn's statements to Sky Sports. So certainly a little bit to unpack there. And clearly location, location, location. It remains the sticking point. And I'd say it's more than just location. It's always been about more than location. Attached to location is control. Each side wants control of the event, control of the revenue streams, and all the other little breadcrumbs that make up a mega event like this one would be. So it is just more than location. It's also about control. So one doesn't go without the other in this situation. And I must say, as an aside here, I was more than a little surprised, perhaps a little shocked even, when it did emerge that Joshua, and this is the last week or so, was willing to give up millions and millions of dollars just to stay in his own backyard. I mean, like I've said before, turning down the biggest heavyweight purse in history, $50 million, is a hell of a thing, especially when part of the reported reason is you want to give back to the fans. And, you know, that sounds good on the surface, you know, well and good, but if you actually stand back and look at that objectively, for me, it's it, it is a bit absurd to hear a prize fighter in his money-making prime say that he's willing to give up that kind of money. A prize fighter, remember, who has been openly saying he wants to become a sporting billionaire. And if Joshua, if he does want to go to that next level of sporting stardom, because arguably he's stuck on a level, it's a pretty good level right now, but to get to that next level, to the real upper echelon, He's going to have to do something, and that probably means travel. And fighting in America, it's going to open up more money for Joshua. And fighting in other places, including America, will open up more money long term than just campaigning in the UK. 
But on the flip side of that coin, you know, Joshua, he's been remarkably consistent about his desire to keep building in the UK, do his thing in the UK. And apparently not even $50 million is going to lure him away. That's quite something. And relatedly, we've been hearing a lot about the potential purse, you know, for Anthony Joshua, you know, and he may take 15 to $20 million less if he does fight in the UK. That's sort of been the money that's been bandied around, somewhere between 30 and 35 million US dollars. But my question is, what about Wilder's purse? Not a lot has been said about that. Originally, he wanted 40% of the pie. So a couple of months ago, he was saying, look, give me 40% of the pie. I will fight in the UK. I'll do whatever. But then he was offered 12.5 million flat. Wasn't happy with that. And I have to wonder, given location has been the sticking point from all accounts, does that mean now that the sort of the money side isn't really from Wilder's end hasn't been brought up much. Does that mean the splits have been agreed and location is truly the last thing left? And if it has, what's Wilder's end? I mean, it has to be more than $12.5 million, surely. I mean, I'm sure some of that or all of it will come out in the wash eventually, but I have been surprised how little it has been spoken about. And that's where my next point comes in. So I've been leading to that. So Eddie Hearn's comment, without Anthony Joshua, the future is not too bright and rosy for Deontay Wilder. So they know that Wilder's value against anyone other than Anthony Joshua, it's capped. His current biggest payday is $2.1 million against Luis Ortiz. So that was earlier this year. Previously, he's been grafting away for purses $900,000 to $1.4 million, around that sort of money. I mean, he would probably get something similar again to the Luis Ortiz payday against his mandatory Dominic Brazil. But let's not kid ourselves. It's not going to be anywhere near $12.5 million, which he rejected. It's not going to be around $15 million or $20 million. I mean, arguably, that's probably what his end, if he's agreed to a fight or does agree to a fight, it's going to be somewhere around that sort of money. Well, I mean, who knows? But it's it's not going to be any less than that. So Joshua and Hearn, what we're seeing right now, they are flexing. They know they are the only game in town if Wilder wants to get paid. And most boxers want to get paid. They want a big payday. Wilder's had several good paydays, but he hasn't had a life-changing payday. And if he wants to get paid, he needs to agree to a fight in the UK. It's really that simple now. And on that basis alone, I could actually see Deontay Wilder walking away. Because we've seen before that when he's been pushed publicly by the likes of Eddie Hearn, he doesn't like it, and he's made it clear he won't be anyone's lackey, and that he can do his own thing if he wants. And right now, we are seeing Deontay Wilder. He's being pushed. I'm sure he's not going to like it. He's been offered a take the deal, or see you later. We'll go fight someone else. You can go fight someone else for relative chump change. That is the message. They're saying your future is not too ro rosy, and they mean money. And the message is also the cherry on top is, well, we're ready for Alexander Povetkin. He's ready to roll. And we know that Eddie Hearn, he's been meeting with Povetkin's management in recent weeks, obviously been sort of hammering out some sort of deal. It's either a step aside or the fight itself, probably working through all the options. And it has been intimated somewhat that Povetkin is willing to face Joshua outside of Russia. And I think it would be very unlikely that Hearn would have left things sort of hanging for a purse bid because, as we know, he might not win it. Uh, he's recently lost some. I mean, that happens to all promoters. But what we haven't heard is Eddie Hearn talking about a purse bid because, remember, one was ordered. But, or actually, sorry, they had a certain amount of time to make a purse bid. But that time has come and gone, and there's been no more talk of purse bids anymore. But there has been sort of the mentioning that there's some sort of deal that's good to go for a Povetkin fight in September, should Wilder Joshua not get made. I mean, that fight, it's not a bad fight, it's just not the one we want next. And conversely, on the Wilder side, we know that WBC first mandatory challenger, Dominic Brazil, 
he's almost waiting gleefully in the wings to get his shot at Deontay Wilder. Again, not a bad fight, but it's not the way, one we want to see. And we have to remember as well, I mean, this is boxing. You never know what could happen. One or both of these guys could lose unexpectedly. I mean, who knows when an injury could strike in the ring? I mean, it's happened to Deontay Wilder before. You know, he busted his hand and his bicep. And we've seen other guys like David Hay recently pull up lame and obviously losing um, matches they were favoured to win. And of course, you have to, you can't discount the prospect of a massive punch landing unexpectedly. I mean, Povetkin and Brazil, they're certainly capable of landing something decent. So I have to say, you know, I am a bit nervous and this whole, we could still agree a deal, but for later, that's, you know, that's kind of cold comfort and, you know, it just delays everything another six months. It's not what I want next. Not what a majority of fans want next. I mean, sure, these guys need to get paid and yada, yada, yada. I just want to see the fight. Ultimately, that's what I want to see is the fight. Because it's a great fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight. Regardless of what your thoughts on who will win, my thoughts are it's a great fight and it's a 50-50 fight. But what we do know at the moment, there's an offer in front of Wilder. It's for a UK-based fight. If he doesn't take it, they all move on. Tick tock, tick tock. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.